Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous little rug. Now this is actually just part one of our rug as you can see. Um, this is where you will be at the end of this tutorial. Part two will be coming up on Monday. Yay! Get excited! <laughs> in the meantime, let's focus on part one. It is a nice, gorgeous, thick yarn, which I'll explain to you in a moment. Uh, this part of the tutorial is very basic. These are all stitches that you guys already know, and if you are joining us new, you can actually do this rug, because I'm going to keep it as simple as possible, and maybe play with a few stitches in the very last round, which will be a border round, and you won't be doing that in this particular part of the tutorial. I will also give a basic border for those of you who struggle with our, I think you could call it an intricate border. All right, so even the newbies, you can do this rug and it will be gorgeous. All right, so let's talk about the yarn. Okay, the yarn is called Motivera Mega Tweed. Now, the word mega, what's that telling you already? <laughs> that it's a super thick super chunky, extra chunky, whatever you call it in your country, all right, um, it is 97% acrylic, 3% viscose, I'm sorry, I'm not using a stand today, guys, so it's a little bit uh, shaky here, <laughs> all right, so here we have the colour cream, and I got my yarn from our Spotlight store here in Melbourne, Australia, you can get uh, your own yarn from wherever you like, just make sure that it calls for, and let me bring this down here a minute. I'll see if I can do it properly. Make sure that it calls for a 15 millimeter. Oh dear, that lighting is terrible. Here we go. 15 millimeter hook. All right. You can use between a 12 millimeter and a 15 millimeter. I would actually work with a 15 millimeter hook. Um, it does make your stitches a little bit more even. Okay. Oh, it went too fast there. Sorry, guys. I've given you a a headache making you all dizzy <laughs> sorry about that all right so i would use a 15 millimeter hook the lighting right here um and it would be very good on your hands as well if you use a smaller hook it would give you a little bit of um pressure on your hands all right so you could probably go up a size if you like it would make your um final major rows the big ones the big solid rows a little bit super thick so just be careful it might bring it out of shape a little i would stick to the 15 millimeter hook if you don't have one don't rush this tutorial is not going anywhere so you can head off and grab yourself a nice little hook from your local yarn store and then join us next week okay anyway we won't be finishing this this week we're only doing this part of the tutorial which is part one part two will be the final rounds of your rug okay so i'm not going to talk anymore we're just going to get started but before we do yes you will need your 15 millimeter hook you will need your scissors now i've just pulled out two darning needles because i'm not really sure which one would work with this super thick yarn if your darning needles if you've got like a massive weaving needle that would be better i actually do have one but i don't know where they are <laughs> So I'll just pull these ones out. Make sure it's got like a large eye there so you can pop your thread through. Oh dear. Yeah, a larger eye there. Okay. All right. So I've just pulled out two, not for any reason, just that they looked a little bit different, but they're actually not. The eye is exactly the same. Oh, and you will also need a stitch marker because when you get to the section right here, as you can see, my thread is still attached sometimes especially with yarn like this i found with me it can get a little confusing to where you need to slip stitch into so if you don't have a stitch marker make sure you pop in a thread or something a different color thread so that you know exactly where you want to pop your um next stitch into your final stitch into all right i'm not going to talk anymore because yes this tutorial does go for a long time as they all do <laughs> anyway good luck making your rug Alrighty, to start off with you, you need to form a quick slip knot. Leave yourself a very nice long tail so that you can weave that in at the end. So it doesn't matter how long, you know, just, you know, two hands full if that helps you. Wrap the yarn around your finger once and twice, holding it there and holding it there. Grab your back loop, pass it halfway over, hold it there. Grab the other loop, passing it all the way over your finger and pop your hook in, giving everything a tug. All right, so what we're going to do now is make 
five chains okay so chain is yarn over your hook and pull it through once mm, this is far too close now that's because this hook is really big <laughs> yarn over twice yarn over three times four whoops and five so you need five chains yes now popping your hook in your first chain that you made and pulling a loop through like so pull everything down see that little line right there that's normal just pull your thread through to the stitch on your hook now notice how I'm holding that little tail we are going to crochet over it but we are also going to weave that in at the end for your first round you're going to chain two one just keep crocheting over that tail there two now that's not going to be classified as a double crochet that's just going to fill a void like a gap if you will and for your next step we're going to put a double crochet in that center crocheting over the tail as well so yarn over your hook pop it in the center pull a loop through and you have one two three loops on your hook yarn over pull through the first two loops two loops yarn over pull through the last two loops now we need to do 16 double crochets in this circle all right so exactly what you've done here you need to do another 15 more so yarn over your hook pop it in the center pull up a loop and you have one two three loops on your hook always adjust it a little bit because with a thicker yarn it sometimes becomes a little loose or a little tight so just adjust it so you've got your three loops yarn over pull through the first two yarn over pull through the last two and again yarn over your hook in the space pull a loop through three loops yarn over two yarn over last two all right so we've done one two and three of them all right now we need to keep going four bit awkward five because we're crocheting over that tail six seven eight nine ten now if you're running out of room just push them all over eleven 12, 13, give it a push up, 14, 15, 16. Pull up that loop there and what we're going to do is count them. All right, now the very first thing we did, grab your tail end and just pop it at the back of your work. All right, you're working this way, remember? All right, now not including these chains right here, you have to start counting from that stitch there. So that is actually where naughty me should have popped a stitch marker and I didn't, so I'm very naughty. <laughs> but there's those two little chains that you did in the beginning and I said it doesn't count as anything. And that's your first double crochet. So one, two, three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen and you are counting these two loops that you are seeing okay a front loop and a back loop and that is your actual stitch all right that's what you're counting all right so you should have 16 because we did it together but if you haven't just add your extra double crochet or take off if you've got too many all right so these are the chains and that's the stitch that we want to pop our hook in this next round i'm going to pop a stitch marker in for you so it'll make it a lot easier pull a loop through and then you're pulling it through to the loop on your hook that is called a slip stitch so you have just joined your circle okay and now for the next round this next round is very similar to making beanies you are putting two double crochets in every stitch but i'll start you off by doing a chain one and two again they're not counted as anything and in the same space you are putting one double crochet okay 
and you know how to do that and then you're going to grab that stitch marker and pop it in between those two loops that we just did and hopefully I didn't split it and I did and that always happens with me because I'm not attentive and there you go <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that out loud, did I? All right, so there's one double crochet. We're going to put our second one on the way back around again. Okay, so it'll kind of cross over that stitch. So just worry about putting one in there. Now you're putting two in every stitch you come to. So there's one double crochet. Whoops, two. It's a bit awkward, isn't it? The thicker yarn. <laughs> and then you go into your next stitch with your two double crochets now you know which stitch you're going into I'll show you again nice and close so you can see where I'm going that little two loops you're going in those two loops right there all right through the back you can actually see the space if you really give your work a tug you can see the space you need to go into all right so continue with your two double crochets all the way around the row super duper easy this row the actual the whole rug itself is relatively easy so there you go I made it easy and then at the end we'll pop a nice little fancy border and again if you are new to crochet take a risk try the border if not just I'll show you an easier version of it or a simple version of it you know um, or a different border if you will if that helps okay keep doing your two double crochets one and two I am going a little bit fast for you <laughs> I don't want you to sit here and watch me do them all but we're almost at the end of this round so I'm thinking I'll just let you watch this one your next round however I'll let you head off on your own it'll be a little different to what you see here okay not extremely different um, very easy everything I try to do on the channel I try to make it as simple as possible except when I say mm, this is not for newbies <laughs> but this one is for newbies so anyone joining us new you can do this pattern okay okay two in there and two in there I almost forgot how many I did then oh, happens we're going to count them two at the end okay now if you remember correctly we had 16 in the previous round so we should end up with 32 in this round if you're using your maths correct you should have 32 stitches all right now we are here this is the stitch that we're working in this big gap you see is actually a last stitch this one here is your slip stitch so don't confuse them with another stitch or you're going to have too many in the round all right so first do your two double crochets in that last stitch all right now remember we only did that's what you should have by the way so far should be a tiny little bit like like almost like it's about to bubble but not right if it's bubbling you may have put too many double crochets in one spot all right just have a look at this one here because that looks like it's bubbling a little bit that's right, just thick all right all right from here if you remember correctly we only put one double crochet in here and we put two chains all right what you're going to do is do another double crochet in that space there so you're doing your double crochet there it's going to be super thick okay so don't stress that's normal then you're going to skip all those chains and you're going to slip stitch into your first double crochet taking that stitch marker out if it helps pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook and I'll just pull up this loop so you can have a look see all right so if you look carefully you can see it very very vaguely that you've got crossed over it's very faint so but what it does is it's filled up any gaps that you may see so you don't know whether it stops and starts at the end of this round now it won't be like this throughout the whole tutorial just for this round um, there will be different ways of us joining throughout the whole tutorial okay but again not difficult yes all right so you've actually completed round two I won't put that back on because we're going to count them now to count your stitches once again that way you're going to count these little two loops you see here so that's one two three four five six seven eight 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and you are actually in your 32nd. See, that's where your stitch is in, all right? So it is exactly 32 with that stitch right there. If you don't have 32, check where you went wrong, okay? But there you go. And that is what you should have. It should kind of lay flat and almost look a little getting ready to bubble, but not, all right? So let's get on with round three. All right, so we are going to start our next row. Now, our next row will consist of uh, V-stitches, okay? If you're not sure what a V-stitch is, I'll show you after the very first stitch we do. In the second stitch, you'll be able to see what a V-stitch is. But for now, the first stitch is chain one, two, and three. Pop your stitch marker in this chain. How you get your stitch marker in there is a little bit awkward, okay? So you just pop it in that first loop right there if you can and pop it through the second loop on the other side try not to pull your work undone okay just close up your stitch marker now if you don't want to use stitch markers that's fine just remember in this particular let me go let's just fix it up in this particular round you have an extra chain here which you're going to do right now chain one and in the same space you're putting a double crochet so all of that is happening in the one stitch okay so when you come back around later you're slip stitching into that one there all right now you are skipping one stitch there so you see those stitches right there all the way across you're skipping your first one that you come to and you're jumping into the second one with what we call a V stitch that's double crochet chain one and double crochet that is exactly what a v-stitch is in crochet so if you ever hear someone say oh i did a v-stitch blanket you'll know that's exactly what they did okay then it's different in this rug but it's the same in the pattern part okay so skipping that next stitch jumping into your next with a v-stitch and guess what chain one double crochet that is all you're doing in this round it's super duper easy skip one v stitch into the next which is a double crochet chain one and double crochet well i said super duper easy didn't i skip one jumping into your next with your double crochet whoops chain one and double crochet what i'm going to do now is just bring that camera out a little bit because it's super thick this yarn so i tend to come out of frame a little bit so I'm hoping that helps skip one jump into your next with your double crochet chain one and double crochet all in the same stitch all right so let me show you what you're doing here so you get it that's what it looks like v v v v v and v Right, in between the V's, you're not doing anything there, but in the actual V, you're putting one chain. Jumping, skipping one stitch, jumping into your next, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip one stitch, jump into your next, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And guess what, guys? You are going to do this on your own. Yes, you are. And you're going to do that. Oh, my yarn's everywhere. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All the way in the round until you get to that stitch right there you should end up with a stitch like that just before this last v the first v sorry all right so head off on your own continue in that manner get to your second last stitch there and i shall meet you up all righty guys this is where you should be at all right so that's it should actually lay flat if it bubbles up then you're doing something wrong so it should actually lay nice and flat all right all right let's oh that's too close sorry all right so i did my last v stitch here remember that last stitch i said not to go into remember this stitch marker right here you have to pop your hook in the same stitch as that nice tight <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone stitch <laughs> don't do those chains so tight mary she says <laughs> pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook you have closed up your circle okay 
but we want to get inside the center of that V stitch for the next round. So we're going to slip stitch yet again, and that's straight into the center, pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Just give it a bit of a tug. You want that nice and tight. And now you're going to chain up three. One, two, don't do this stitch too tight, three, because you're going to join on that one. <laughs> Mary, actually it is fairly tight. I can still feel it tight. You think I should, you would think I'd fix it, wouldn't you? Pop your stitch marker in. Now I've split the stitch, so at the end of the row it's going to be a bit awkward, but that's fine. Don't split your stitches. <laughs> All right, you've done your chain three. You are going to do two double crochets in that same space. So one. And two. So in this round, your chain three will act as a double crochet. Okay. Now you chain one. And you jump straight into the next space with your, you remember the double crochet, your V-stitch? Jump into the V-stitch right in the space there with three double crochets. All right, so what you're doing, let me show you exactly what you're doing. You are skipping one double crochet, two double crochets, and you're jumping into the big space, if that helps. All right, so in that big space with three double crochets. One, two, and three chain one all right that is the round really three double crochets chain one okay and you remember or you have to remember actually is skipping one double crochet two double crochets jumping into your big chain space there of your v-stitch doing your three double crochets two and three chain one super duper easy all right my yarn's all over the place all right what we're going to do i'm not going to let you watch me do that because it's going to be unfair on you because it'll take me a while as it will take you a while <laughs> so you are doing three double crochets in your very next chain space three double crochets chain one skip these two jump into your space three double crochets chain one skip these two three double crochets, chain one, and so on and so on and so on until you get to your very last V-stitch. Do your three double crochets, chain one, and I shall meet you up right there. Okay. All righty, guys, this is what you should have. And you should actually have, these are called clusters, okay? You should actually have 16 clusters of double crochets in the round. So 16 groups of double crochets and a chain between each group okay if you don't have that your next round is going to be out all right so stay focused in that area there can be um parts where you can fudge but you'd rather not fudge if you get it right the first time all right so we're going to slip stitch into that stitch marker and i put that stitch marker in crooked before so i'm going to take that out with the stitch when you're slip stitching all you're doing is popping it through that first loop of the chain and the second loop so i hope that helps and see how tight that was for me Okay, so all you're doing is pulling a loop through there and pulling it through to the loop on your hook and you have closed up your rug, okay? From here, okay, we need to start in our next space, right? The next space is over. So we need to slip stitch across these two double crochets. Let me get a nice close up there. All right, so we're slip stitched in the first chain. Now we're going to slip stitch into that next double crochet or the stitch, if you will. All right, then you're going to slip stitch into the last double crochet on that cluster. Okay, and now you're just going to slip stitch into the space. Pop your hook in, pull a loop through, and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Chain one. Nice tight chain there. Okay, we are going to start here, and you're going to do what we call a half double crochet. Now it's very similar to a double crochet, but it doesn't complete the same. All right, so your yarn over your hook is the same. Pop it in the space, pull a loop through, and you've got your normal three loops on your hook. With the half double, you're pulling your yarn through all three. So yarn over your hook like normal, but you're pulling it through all three loops on your hook. Wait, before we go, you need to pop a stitch marker in. Oh, it's so tight. This is probably not the right stitch marker to use as well. You need a, a very large stitch marker if you have. Or a large safety pin okay and now from here we are chaining three one 
two and three. This is the best part, guys. You're going to love this round. Yarn over your hook. You're going to pop a half double in your very next space. Hook in, pull a loop through, and pull it through all three loops on your hook. Chain one, two, and three. Half double in your very next space. That's the round, guys. That is your round all the way through. One, two, three, and half double in your next space. Super duper easy one two and three a little awkward for me try to get this whole thing inside under the camera here <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna knock it off the table anyway one two three that's gonna be fun wouldn't it well, that's happened a few times before in my um, uh, bloopers videos in fact I might actually pop a blooper video in the description box down below for you the very first video you come to and that will be our bloopers video and you can see how many times i've knocked over that stand <laughs> all right so there you go see with this round here it kind of made it a little bit you know full and you think the next round is going to make it all wavy no this round here will tighten it up and your next round will loosen it up again all right so easy 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 continue in that manner chain three half double chain three half double chain three half double all the way around get to the space before your stitch marker and i'll meet you up all righty guys here we are at the end of the row and as you can see it's got a tiny lift about this row so it's not a huge lift if it's looking like that then that's wrong okay it just needs to have a tiny little you can kind of see it kind of lifts up very little on the edges there like that Right, that's normal, all right, because your next round, we're going to fill that little gap there. Or well, the big gaps, if you, want, if you want to call them big gaps, you can. Now, this is where my half double is, and this is where my last three double crochets are that we slip stitched across, if you remember. And I don't think you're going to be able to see this, so I'm going to bring it out just that little bit. There we go. Now, we are chaining one, two, and three. And then we're going to slip stitch into where our stitch marker was placed. So pop your hook in there, take out your stitch marker. And if you've split yarn like I do sometimes, take your stitch marker out first and then pull your loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Okay. Now, this section here, this row here, it's not difficult. You just have to remember where you are popping your stitches. Okay. So here you're going to chain one and two only now these stitches won't count in this round you're going to put a double crochet in the same stitch that you are in like so all right and that's where you pop your stitch marker right there through there and i think i've split it no it should be all right i think i have doesn't matter we'll sort it out into the row oh dear i'm going to get a bigger stitch marker i think for this particular yarn <laughs> <laughs> all right so you've got one double crochet in there now what you're going to do you're going to pop four double crochets in this space yarn over your hook and go for it one two three and four all right and then you see your half double crochet here you're going to pop a double crochet on top of your half double crochet so pop your hook in and you're doing a double crochet on top of your half double then you are doing four double crochets in the space one two three and four now this is a repeat pattern here okay so one double crochet in your half double hopefully it's not as tight as mine <laughs> and four double crochets in the space and that is actually your repeat stitch in the round told you the the rug was going to be super easy not as difficult as the one that i did first talk about on my live a few weeks ago and by the way guys we have our lives on wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m and saturday mornings at 10 a.m that's melbourne australia time Okay. The reason I'm stalling here is because I've got that little bit left of yarn and I want to show you how I do the join. So continue in this stitch 
in the round and I'll show you my join. Make sure you put your double crochet in your half double crochet from the previous round and then four double crochets in this space. Now that must be, it's fairly important not to forget the amount you're putting in there because it'll change your pattern if you don't. Whoops, that's no good. Let's try that again. <laughs> and there's your fourth double crochet, okay? So make sure you put all the stitches in the right place and one in your half double. Super duper easy, yeah? One, two, and three. I'm not, whoops, whoops. That's only a half double. Let's try that again. How many have I done? <laughs> one, two, hello. Three and four. I almost said three before and forgot the fourth one, hey? That happens. So be very careful because we usually do three in, in each cluster usually. Now we're doing another four. Don't forget to put that double crochet on top of your half double. Two. Three. And four. Just going to stop for a moment to show you what I mean because you won't be able to see it later. Remember before I said this this chain section here was kind of bowing up. When you put these extra stitches in, so I've added extra, I've doubled in other words, so it's going to fill up those gaps, right? Um, it will make your rug flat. It's all about count when you're doing things in the round, okay? So there you go, keep going in that. I want to just wanted to keep going because I want to get to the end of this and it won't take long. I'm looking at about another, I don't know, five, six stitches and so I can show you how to do the join. If you are an avid crocheter and you're happy to do the join your own way, oh, I've messed that stitch up right there, um, you can head off on your own and meet us at the end of the row, okay? Keep going all the way across two, three, four. What I meant, avid crochet, I meant an intermediate. <laughs> Someone who's been doing crochet for a long time. If you've got your own join, then head off on your own and meet us at the end of the row. But for the rest of us who want to learn how to do a different join, then this is the one we're going to do. That'll happen in a couple of minutes now. Two, three, and four. Remembering to put your double crochet in your half double right there. All right. And then you've got your oops, four in there. Okay, so it was more than 10 stitches. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Two, three, and four. And one in there. And four in there. So we are getting there. Two, three, and four. All right, nearly there. All one in a stitch. <clears throat> and four in the space. I really did misjudge that, didn't I? <laughs> Hello, Mary. Three <laughs> and four. All right, one in your stitch, and it's all split here. What have I done? I've got it in the wrong stitch. Hello, get it right, Mary. There, and four in here. One, two. All right, this is where we're going to do the join. I'll show you in a minute. You've got that much left. Yes. Three. And four. Still a little bit more, we can get one more in and we'll get it in this double crochet right there. Now it doesn't always work this join, but it will work in this case. So grab yourself another yarn. Okay, so there's my skein and I've actually managed to get it 
from a centre pull, which doesn't always happen. And with one of the other skeins, I did a centre pull and it had a knot a quarter of the way through. So it kind of caught me by surprise, but there you go. All right, so there is your thread. Leave yourself a nice long tail so that you can weave that in. And we got, let me try that again. So we're in that stitch there and we did half the stitch, like so. And we pulled it through and you've got your last two loops on your hook yeah so let me show you it's too close all right so grab that tail and just pop it in your hand at the back or drop it or whichever makes it easier for you grabbing yourself your new yarn again leaving a nice long tail to help you weave in you probably don't leave that you don't need to leave that much but still and just pull the loop through to the loop on your hook so it's actually finished off that stitch and now just giving both those threads a tug not too much and you finished off your double crochet there and now you're popping your four double crochets one two three and four and i'll show you how to weave those ends in in a couple of rounds okay that's probably too long for me look at that <laughs> how thick is that hey that's really thick all right so i'll show you how to weave those ends in at the end of the row or maybe the end of a couple of more rows give yourself a few rows to make sure you haven't made any mistakes because the way i weave these ends in you won't be able to get that undone without cutting your work trust me <laughs> really really um tight at weaving in so one two three four Yep, I was going to say head off on your own, but look what we've got left. <laughs> That's all we've got left. So we're going to keep going on. And there's your double in there. And you've got four in there. Two, three, four. Oops drop that because i've got a bit of fluff coming out there it's quite a fluffy yarn this one and one in your half double crochet and then four in your next space one two three and four one in your stitch <laughs> tight stitch there hello <laughs> okay now you've got your last chain four here i'm sorry chain three here you're going to put four double crochets in there like normal two three and four all right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch right where that um, stitch marker is. And I did split the yarn, so I'm going to take, look what I've done there. Look at all that. <laughs> I've gone through everything. Oh my gosh, <laughs> don't do that. So you're going to slip stitch uh, not into this chain down here, but right into your double crochet where your stitch marker was. Pull that through, all right? And that's what you have okay so i don't know if i can blow that out any further because it's looking far too big what <laughs> and there you go all right now this is pretty much where i want to leave you for this part just pull a loop through like so for now grabbing your stitch marker and just popping it through the loop if you can this is not a good stitch marker for this <laughs> and don't pull it too tight because that will actually stitch marker will actually go through there okay so really it's just to keep your uh, stitch from coming undone all right and i'm just going to leave you here for this now in uh, part two of our tutorial we are going to do the next section okay and once we do the next section i'll show you how to weave in those two ends that we did up there don't weave those in yet because if you have not done this row correct you're not going to be able to take it undone all right but what i will do for everyone here for now because i think this is a good idea is show you how to weave in that very first um thread well, i'm just going to fold it this way because i want you to see and there's just far too much happening in the background the camera's going to go crazy on me all right so what you have to do is 
thread your needle now hopefully you have got a nice big eye <laughs> like that <laughs> see threading your needle all right now when we crocheted with this we crocheted that way okay normally I would go that way and then come back around there's not a lot of thread so I am going to start going back that way I'm going through some threads here all right just in there right through all the thicknesses now I'm not going to split much of the yarn because the thicknesses are good enough make sure you can't see the needle on the opposite side and you can't so just pop that needle right through like so now if you wanted to close that real tight that the problem with that this thick yarn is you're going to make the blanket like that I wouldn't close it tight I would leave it with a tiny little hole and with the rug a tiny tiny little holes not a bad thing I would go back the other way of course in a different section of of stitches if that helps making sure you can't see your needle from the front and you can't just pulling your thread through now that might be tough there you go keep doing it keep going in the round okay I think it's really important to really make sure that first thread because you know we didn't actually do a proper knot did we and let's just check the front not there good and I think this will do and I'm struggling to get this through anyway <laughs> super duper thick now so that's it I would give that a cut yeah and if you just give your your rug a bit of a tug it's done that was your back by the way flip your work back over and there's your front all right so I'm going to leave you here guys and I'm going to join you again on Monday for part two of your gorgeous easy rug thank you so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share and I will leave also a playlist to the rug in the description box down below so if you are watching this tutorial in a you know a few months time let's just say next year <laughs> <laughs> you can just go down in the playlist and check where part one, two, three, all the way up to whatever we get up to. I don't think it'll be too many. I think we'll get up to part two or part three, the max, because I don't have a lot of yarn. All right. So there you go, guys. Gorgeous. I love, love, love. How gorgeous is it? Thank you so much for watching. And all I want to say right now is ciao for now.